I'm Alison Beer of alisonbeer.com and today we're going to look at the use of a contour line in drawing. This is a drawing that I did earlier of my own hand resting at a slightly interesting angle on a plain page and the reason that I'm showing you this and taking you through this exercise which is about the use of a contour line in drawing is so that you can get a better understanding of actual hands in real life which will help you to be able to draw better cartoon hands. Now, why would you want to use contour line in your drawing? I can think of three good reasons which have really helped me. The first is that when I use a contour line drawing, I look to see and not judge. So when I first do the outside contour, I'm really looking and trying to copy that line rather than worrying about how I'm going to fit all the detail in. Using this approach does override your left brain, so that, that rational um, inner critic brain of yours which is constantly thinking, oh that's not quite right, oh you really messed that one up. It, this approach overrides that and you often get a superbly accurate result. So it's well worth using this, it's a very traditional art kind of method, not something I usually use for cartooning, because when you cartoon you're drawing something out of your imagination rather than copying something that you see. But when you're trying to get to grips with tricky things which can trip you up when you're cartooning, tuning, such as hands, this is a really good thing to fall back on. I'm now going to recreate this drawing digitally, going over my old one, so that you can see the technique and you'll be able to use it for yourself. So the, this is a contour line drawing. So the first thing I did was literally go around the external contours of my hand. So following along here, my two wedding rings, down to the first knuckle and then not lifting off the page, going around the next knuckle all the way down and you see I'm not worried at all about the details at the moment. I'm literally going around the outside. I'm not worried about fingernails. I'm not worried about the where the fingers have lines in between. I'm just going around the outside. So here where the fingers cross underneath I'm not following the finger that I can see most of, I'm including the contour of the one underneath. Then all the way around here to the thumb and the outer side of the thumb, here this knuckle at the heel of the thumb, this pad, fleshy pad on the outside and then down to the wrist. So once you have those initial contours, the outer contour in place, it's time to go back and start looking at the other lines and there are these wonderful um, triggers I guess, these cues that you get from the outside. So as you go along the contour you see, okay so these two little, this little M shape here is because there are two rings here. So then I went and I put in the lines to show those. I didn't bother with the shading yet, just the lines. Then again here where you can see there's this bend here it lends itself to looking again and you know that there's a line here which defines the top of my middle finger. So there it goes to the knuckle and a few lines then down there because there's a tendon which goes to the wrist. Similarly here where we come round the bend and we can see that the middle finger meets my pointer finger here. So I pick up the line, still always looking carefully back at my hand, which is I keep in that same position, putting in a few lines here for this tendon. And now I've pretty much filled in the big lines in between and it's time to go back and start looking at some of the detail. So I can now put in, let's choose another color just because we can. Uh, this, is, this is a wrinkle kind of where, where the skin wrinkles at my wrist. And there of course are these wrinkles at each knuckle on the underside which kind of come round the side of my fingers. So I've put those in. And again here, so I'm using the, doing the strongest lines first. And then there's this line here where my finger kind of bends a little. These marks underneath are the shadow that was cast by my hand underneath. So I can come to those later. And I can also now fill in the fingernails. So here's my thumbnail and these wrinkles on this side, which I probably actually did a bit earlier. I can just do a little bit of uh, hatching to show where the light is catching. And here there was a whole lot of wrinkly stuff going on. 
between the thumb and the forefinger. Here is just a little bit of shadowing to show the underside of the hand. Another wrinkle here with some folds. Then here I can see almost the underside of the finger. So I've drawn it in and I've shaded it with a bit of shading at the base of this finger. Side of the fingernail showing. This finger doesn't show the fingernail at all. And again I can come and just put in some very fine shading lines to show how the light is shining off my rings. Some lines here to just define the edge of the hand. And then I can come in underneath and again put in the shadowing. And where it's deepest I use a cross hatching technique. Where it's not so deep I can use just a single line in one direction and gradually build up places where the shadows are deepest versus where the shadows are softer like this and build up the picture of my hand. There you have it, my version of a contour line drawing of a hand to help you understand it better and to get a grip on the anatomy. And as I said before, it helps you to see clearly without judging yourself it really does override your left brain and give you an opportunity to get an extremely accurate result in quite a relaxing way. Did you like this video? If you did, please give it a huge thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to my channel there. And if you'd like even more tips that I only share on email, head on over to my website www.alisonbeer.com and sign up for email updates. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.